Dear students present here on site and dear online participants, welcome to this fourth lecture to the lecture series, Strengthening EU Environment Law, Legal Perspectives on Greening Europe. Today, the lecture will be delivered by Professor Jula Bandi, Professor of Environment Law at the Pasmani Peter Catholic University in Hungary. Professor Bandi contributed to the research handbook on EU environment law with a chapter on EU environmental law principles, including the concept of sustainable development. But today, Professor Bandi will talk about the rights of future generations. And since Professor Bandi is Ombudsman for Future Generations in Hungary, we very much look forward to his insightful thoughts, not only based on theory, but also practice. Professor Bandi, I invite you to take the floor. Thank you very much. So uh, I, I'm, many, many thanks for inviting me to this uh, wonderful lecture series because uh, I had the opportunity to attend uh, all the previous uh, presentations, which uh, I found very interesting myself, and I am uh, uh, looking very much forward to the uh, uh, next round uh, of the speakers. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to be with you here and uh, uh, to talk about my uh, uh, very specific subject, which uh, is on the one hand, as, as, as Marian uh, mentioned, uh, on the one hand is uh, uh, seemingly theoretical, but on the other hand is uh, uh, very practical at the same time. And that's what I uh, would like to present to you. And, uh, uh, and I hope uh, uh, with my uh, uh, theoretical and also practical examples, you uh, might find it interesting. Let's begin with uh, the outline. Uh, as you can see, I would like first to talk about something, some words about sustainable development and future generations and also its uh, uh, role within uh, the uh, European community and then Euro EU law. Then also something about the sustainable development and primarily about the sustainable development goals and uh, their legal, the likely legal consequences. And uh, uh, at the third time, turning to the uh, future generations issue, and uh, provide you a short uh, survey and then something about concepts and considerations and uh, how the UN uh, is uh, working in that respect. Then how to come closer to the, to the essence of the problem, whether we should talk about rights or uh, uh, referably obligations. And then I would, uh, as uh, in my practical, uh, using my practical side, I also would like to talk about this uh, other future generations institutions and our role somehow, because uh, it might be interesting that uh, uh, there is something like this uh, as uh, 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 not a very, very protected species at the moment as an ombudsman for future generations in Hungary. So uh, I, in my presentations, I use two philosophers, as you can see. Uh, I have three uh, 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 very good uh, messages of the uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Probably you know them, but I don't know whether it is uh, well known today, but uh, uh, then 10, 15 years ago, they liked it very much, but they have very good messages for us, as you can see that one. Uh, uh, looking at the mankind and its activity and its uh, environmental uh, impact and, and the burden that we put on the, on the environment. So this is uh, my first message to, uh, to begin with, but I hope uh, it will be more optimistic at the end. When we talk about uh, the sustainable development questions and within this uh, future generations concept, of course, we should go through very quickly through the road from the Stockholm uh, uh, 51 years ago, the Stockholm conference to the uh, 2015 sustainable development goals. Because uh, uh, if, you if you look at the Stockholm uh, declaration and the Stockholm conference, you, you 
find nearly everything which uh, uh, could also come up in details later. So the Stockholm conference was a very good summary of, uh, of the problems and uh, some, uh, some suggestions for uh, the, how to make steps forward. Uh, and it was uh, 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 relatively more open towards environmental problems than the next uh, UN conferences. As you might re remember that uh, the, uh, the, for the preparation of the second uh, big conference, the Environmental Development Conference in Rio, uh, this Brundtland Commission has been established and that was the one which finally uh, formulated the, the definition of sustainable development, saying, as, as you can see, that uh, meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It, is, it, is, it sounds very easy. So it is seemingly a, a, a very clear message, but uh, probably you can realize that uh, practically it is far from being so uh, uh, um, simple. So the, uh, no wonder why the Rio uh, conference uh, in uh, uh, more than 30 years ago, uh, re reinforced these things. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the, uh, that human beings are at the center, and then the principle three, again, this uh, present and future generations needs together. Uh, not uh, too much afterwards that uh, there was a, a, a huge report on the uh, legal constituents of uh, what sustainable development should mean for law. And this was uh, how to put these things together. And one of the aspects uh, was, uh, uh, which I emphasized and uh, several others, but I only also emphasized the right to a healthy environment, which uh, 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 was uh, 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 some additional point to the uh, previous messages. And then I also, mentioned the uh, International Law Association, which uh, in, uh, first in New Delhi and later in Sofia, uh, 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 explained the, this uh, sustainable development vis-a-vis uh, -vis legal consequences that uh, sustainable development is maturing uh, into a principle of international law. So that is the beginning. And then we, let's have a look at the, how it works, because we are talking about mostly about European law and how it works uh, in the community and then later on the, in the EU law. Uh, as, you can see, as you can see and probably uh, remember that in already in the Maastricht Treaty in Article 2, uh, sustainable development has been mentioned as an objective, sustainable and non-inflationary growth respecting the environment. Now and then we turn to, to the Lisbon Treaty and we don't go too much into the history and the, the Lisbon Treaty. There are several elements which uh, 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 might be taken as uh, uh, basics for uh, the future generations issue. Uh, one is the uh, that sustainable development of Europe, covering solidarity between generations, then sustainable development of the earth, uh, I already mentioned that uh, the right to environment, right to, uh, uh, and we will see what kind of environment, healthy, uh, safe, sustainable, we will see that there are different uh, names, but we are not going into that details because it's an absolutely different uh, presentation. Uh, it was mentioned in Article 6, and then uh, there is the integration question, uh, which uh, uh, we, are coming back uh, in, in, in some details next. And then the, uh, the environmental title and this uh, uh, harmonization uh, issue continued uh, from the original art, uh, Article 100 of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Treaty of Rome. Uh, now it is Article 114. And then uh, comes circular economy as uh, also might uh, know. And then uh, currently the Green Deal, of course, the two are uh, come, uh, working together. It, it is not, uh, there is not, not, not in the individual questions. Let's go uh, to the last year, uh, jump to the last year uh, and look at the uh, 
environmental action program of uh, the current environmental action program, the AIDS, which is um, uh, working till uh, 2030. How it is re uh, mentioned, whether it, 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 how does it mention the, uh, the future generations? And then you can see there are several questions which uh, uh, might be taken into consideration in the preamble, the, uh, the uh, uh, improving the quality of life for current and future generations, and also they speak about resilience and well-being of present and future generations, and uh, 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 joining to the concept uh, presented uh, nearly at the same time by the United Nations first, uh, Human Rights Council, and then uh, uh, after, very soon after the adoption of the AIDS Action Program by the by the uh, General Assembly, that there should be a right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment, uh, which is uh, 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 very promising. Uh, looking at the uh, uh, past decades, when uh, such kind of uh, relatively uh, late innovation. Uh, could not uh, be done. So that is the uh, that is the eight section program. And uh, 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 when we go uh, uh, into the details a bit, then there are the priority objectives uh, in mentioned in Article Two. Uh, it's the well-being economy, as you can see, uh, taking into consideration the planetary boundaries, well-being of all people and prosperity of present and future generations globally guided by intergenerational responsibility. Intergenerational, as you know, it means the future generations, while the present means the intragenerational responsibility. Of course, the uh, well-being of all people and the generational uh, equity uh, goes in hand in hand because uh, 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 hum mankind is uh, is uh, uh, not only for uh, it does not only mean the present, and again they uh, underline the importance of the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment internationally. And then we go to the uh, sustainable development goals. A bit jumping back some years, uh, but it, it is uh, quite important. As you can see, seventeen goals and hundred and ninety, uh, hundred sixty nine. Uh, elements uh, attached to these goals, as you can see, and, and you know them very much, I, I think, they, there are so many different uh, types of sustainable development goals. No wonder why, uh, and then it's the link between the uh, SDG as, and the uh, AIDS Action Program, is that uh, using this kind of uh, as, as a, uh, an American student of, uh, told me that it's like a wedding cake. It looks like a wedding cake. It is the uh, uh, in, in invention of the Stockholm Resilience Center as it is referred to this fact uh, in the uh, its action program itself. So uh, somehow we organizing the 17 uh, sustainable development goals uh, using some uh, some way or another this this older concept of uh, three main uh, 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 rounds of or three main circles of sustainable development that environmental biosphere society and economy and uh, uh, sending the message to everyone and through this kind of uh, 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 picture or so this kind of wedding cake is that uh, society is based on biosphere and the economy should work for the society and then uh, the cooperation is uh, uh, the, the, the young couple is at the top as you can see this is the uh, 17. So this is uh, this is the uh, uh, the underlining concept also uh, uh, presented by the, uh, the AIDS Action Program. And that's what we try to look at from legal point of view. If we are looking, uh, and uh, it has been mentioned that I, uh, I had the pleasure to participate in this book, and then I uh, speak something uh, about this uh, sustainable development as a legal principle. So what are those legal elements and legal considerations uh, uh, added uh, or expressed in the sustainable development goals. Uh, in, in the beginning, you can see that uh, uh, there are 
two elements, intergenerational equity, inter intragenerational equity and uh, integration multiplied with integration. But what are those uh, uh, specific elements which uh, uh, are going uh, into that uh, uh, broader uh, suspect, uh, aspect? So the first, of course, the right to environment, uh, which can be safe, healthy, sustainable, as you could see, but uh, uh, there are several other uh, ways how we express uh, uh, this uh, content of this uh, right to environment. That, that's the reason why I'm using it in that formula, because uh, I do not want to uh, uh, put a pressure on anyone to, uh, about what is uh, their own understanding. Of course, uh, uh, very strongly related to, uh, to this, the rights of future generations. And also, as, you, it, as uh, it can be seen above, uh, that intragenerational equity, so the, the, the current generations. Uh, of course, public participation is usually accepted as, uh, as a, a, a very relevant and important element a legal uh, constituent of uh, sustainable development, cooperation uh, and cooperative instruments, so which uh, uh, wants to reflect the, the major problem of, uh, uh, of interrelationship that everything, uh, of, as you might know that uh, uh, there are several concepts of, uh, of uh, ecology, for example, saying that the, among others, like there is no such thing as free lunch, or that the nature knows better and everything is connected with every, everything else. Uh, of course, you have to understand it in, in, in its uh, own place, so it, it, it should not mean uh, much that we are, uh, there is a huge interrelationship uh, for us uh, and within, within the environment. And then uh, integration, I uh, refer to uh, the no, 26 years old. Last year we had a conference on this, uh, 26 years conference of this uh, Gabčíkov von Edmaros case of the International Court of Justice, which was one of the first big cases uh, in connection with sustainable development and environmental protection. And uh, the case itself is uh, is uh, is. Uh, 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 rather uh, interesting, and it is, has, it's, um, does not have any strong views, but some elements are very, very important, like this, that what is integration, the need to reconcile economic development with protection of the environment. And this is the concept. It is within the concept of sustainable development. Of course, pre precautionary principle which uh, together with scientific uncertainty, because uh, of course precautionary principle uh, means that uh, uh, we should not wait till uh, the negative consequences are uh, absolutely proven because it's usually too late. And subsidiarity, which uh, we all know, uh, of course good governance uh, is, uh, is always included, and something relatively new, which was it's coming uh, up in the last uh, uh, decade, I would say that it is is the the concept of resilience. So, uh, and I hear I, I mentioned one good example is that when we are talking about climate change, there are uh, climate mitigation questions and climate adaptation questions, and resilience is rather something which is closer to the adaptation that to adapt ourselves to the changing uh, circumstances and changing situations. So this is, these are the legal considerations in general. And now, I, uh, again, my good philosophers are coming back uh, uh, to me uh, just to, to uh, give you some rest uh, uh, from this uh, presentation that uh, uh, why uh, we say that uh, what hap might happen in the future. Uh, uh, so, Sorry for this, but uh, I like these uh, fantastic philosophers, if you don't mind. Okay, what is the concept? Uh, and the concept of, of uh, future generations, and now turning to this uh, point uh, to, uh, more. Sustainable development, again, I repeat what has already been said, that two principles, intergenerational and intergenerational equity. In terms of uh, intergenerational equity and inter, uh, future generations issues, 
I have to uh, 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 mention uh, the works of Edith Brown Weiss, Professor Edith Brown Weiss, who uh, uh, more than 30 years ago uh, uh, made great efforts uh, to, to explain and express what uh, these future generations issues really mean and he, she said that uh, they are three major elements or three major principles uh, which uh, we have to uh, understand. First is that uh, to conserve options, so uh, options for the future. And uh, I, here I do not want to go too much into the details, which is also very interesting that uh, what future generations exactly mean, uh, uh, whether it is uh, uh, like uh, uh, seven generations and in fairy tales that, uh, uh, or it is more, of course, uh, we should not limit ourselves uh, uh, in that respect to, to uh, some uh, numbers. But the question is that future generations who are, uh, uh, from, from my perspective, most of you who are listening, uh, uh, compared with me, uh, are, belong to the future generations. And they are uh, my, my grandchild, um, uh, who is only four years old, uh, is, is probably uh, at, uh, the one who is representing another uh, uh, group of future generations and uh, uh, going on. So they should have the same uh, or at least uh, comparable choice uh, as we have. Maintain the quality comparable to which it has been enjoyed by previous generations. Of course, we know that they are all conceptual things because practically it is it's not really possible that uh, that uh, uh, we have the same. Therefore, uh, we, we only say that the quality is comparable to what has been enjoyed by previous generations because uh, uh, everything has been changed. And uh, when, uh, uh, for example, if I might say uh, uh, and, and, and express the difference that when I was born, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Humankind uh, was only two and a half billion. And uh, you know, today it's a little bit more. Uh, so that's a huge difference. And then finally, it's equitable access. For example, the, uh, one of the best uh, and very uh, probably the most important is the access to potable water supplies, because as you know, uh, there is a, uh, uh, in the current months, there are a very important uh, conferences uh, organized by the UN about these water uh, uh, problems and water rights. Uh, and uh, quoting the uh, Human Rights, uh, Human uh, Rights, uh, Council of Human Rights, uh, that uh, environmental degradation, climate change, and sustainable development constitute the most pressing and serious threats to the ability of present and future generations to enjoy the right to life. This is very important because also when you are looking at, if uh, we don't go into that details, of course, about this new General Assembly uh, uh, decision last year, last July, uh, about this uh, right to, to safe health and sustainable environment, it was also mentioned that uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a precondition for all the other rights, because uh, without this, you are not able to survive. Okay, how to come closer now to the question of uh, uh, future generations' rights? Shall we express it in a way that uh, we try to push uh, the, uh, the, the, how, the question how to define the rights of future generations? Or uh, better, it is better if we are talking about the duties of today. Uh, I, I think it was two uh, uh, presentations earlier than it was the question of the, the, the duty of state and obligation of the state, which is very uh, much closer, uh, close to this uh, question. I want to quote something about uh, in, in that respect, uh, I, uh, which I like very much uh, uh, the uh, other authors 
how to uh, uh, try, how do they express uh, this problem. Uh, if we are talking, if we want to talk about the rights of future generations that uh, uh, we are not doing anything else, but we say to the future about our aspirations. It is very really a good message because really you don't uh, uh, know exactly uh, what are, uh, what is the situation 50 years from now. Uh, 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 even we don't know exactly what is uh, in 2050, uh, uh, which is much less, it's much closer. So uh, we don't know exactly what are the conditions. And uh, uh, I like uh, 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 Bosselman's uh, message uh, saying that we only have more or less informed guesses what should be the uh, the, 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 what are the conditions of future generations, living conditions, and what of rights uh, we are, can talk about. So therefore, uh, the reasonable choice is, is, is says for a duty to pass on the integrity of the planetary ecosystem as we have inherited it. And also uh, in another way, uh, when you are uh, looking at the, even the eight section program and also the taxonomy regulation of the EU, then this is the no harm concept that what is the minimum is not to cause harm. Uh, and then uh, it, it, uh, 20, 10 years ago, the UN Secretary General, the Secretary General is uh, are, are always working too, too, uh, in, in, in respect of, uh, in, towards the interests of future generations. They, 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 he underlined a, a very simple question, that they are politically powerless. So therefore it is, uh, 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 they cannot express their views. So we have to uh, help the future generations uh, how to express their views and not to write wonderful papers about what are the, option, the possibilities for, for the rights. Because when uh, it is it is somehow a, a, an unlimited uh, uh, work, uh, but it is more concrete when you think about what are the obligations of today. That is respected in this uh, human rights concept. Uh, if you if we look at the thirty years old, uh, it was one of it, probably the first big uh, cases in Philippines. It was the miners of Poza. Uh, about forest cutting forests and and uh, about uh, uh, it, the case started um, in the name of future generations as you might know that there are many uh, uh, similar cases uh, have been issued uh, uh, in connection with climate change problems and people's climate case uh, in eu the uh, 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 the elder how can i say the seniorem uh, case in, in Switzerland about the uh, uh, retired ladies. Uh, of course, they are not expect, uh, exactly the future generations uh, issue. But uh, the, the question is that how to uh, push, how to uh, uh, put a, uh, an obligation, how to oblige the governments to do something. And this was the uh, first in, in this uh, Philippines case the miners assertion of the right to a sound environmental constitutes at the same time, the performance of their obligation to ensure the protection of that right for the generations to come. Uh, one also is very, was very clear, I like it very much, that why do we, uh, uh, why don't we talk about so much about the future generation and why the politicians and why the decision makers are not so willing to, uh, to uh, 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 think about the future generations. Uh, first, uh, and I think it's very good uh, uh, summary, the natural human tendency to prefer the immediate to the distance. So we see ourselves now, we don't know exactly who, we, who is coming next, what are those uh, 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 preferences, so uh, it's better to look at the current situation. Uh, the representatives, I mean the political representatives, should be responsive to their constituents. So who are elected them? Uh, the future generations is not in that position. No wonder why in many countries they, they, they could see, face the question of how to provide some uh, uh, rights to... to, to uh, also, it was in Hungary that it was an idea that uh, those who have two or three children might have one more vote and things like that. Of course, it failed, 
but it is a, a, it's a very interesting question how to come closer to this. And democracy is a government pro tempore. So uh, 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 think about it that how long is the government cycle? Usually it's four years or uh, therefore they think uh, they do not really think about the longer uh, periods than that. And uh, 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 it's very it's not nice for uh, uh, for me, but uh, they, uh, the, the tendency to favor the older age group. Uh, um, so sorry for that, uh, for the youngsters. So what is the suggestion of Thompson is that to protect future generations, we have to establish institutions uh, to give special attention to the potential. So institutions and some attention. Uh, there are some, some elements of legal institutional support. Uh, 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 Maria mentioned that I'm from Catholic University, so I hope you don't mind if I refer to uh, uh, an encyclical of John Paul II, uh, which is very important, and I think it's a very important message, that we are the guardians uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the environment or creation, as it is, and it's, it's all the same how we call it. And, and, the, and the question, the guardians is all mankind with all generations. And I think it's, it's, it's uh, again, a very important uh, basic theoretical concept, but let's go to, to UN and back again. Uh, and I already mentioned, what can we do? Minimize harm doing what, which benefits both present and future generations. Uh, I quote the uh, Hungarian Constitutional Court because uh, it has very uh, good, uh, uh, decisions in, in connection with that kind of issues. For example, talking about the heritage of future generations and the minimum question, the minimum uh, which uh, we should attain is the, uh, to use the non-retrogression, so uh, not to step back from the already achieved results. And then, uh, uh, recently, again, the UN Sustainable uh, Secretary General began to uh, focus on, and also the General Assembly or, or in, in the current term, began to focus on uh, the future generations issue, uh, mentioning again that the, the problem of that the being unpresent, unrepresented, and uh, as a consequence, to try to formulate forums to act, trustees, instruments, to how to pr uh, uh, protect their interests further. Um, it is also from the same uh, message that uh, uh, strengthening the capacities to understand the assess the future, and, and which means long-term thinking, using those kind of elements uh, uh, and uh, integration, sub uh, subsidiarity, public participation, which I already mentioned uh, as, as constituents of sustainable development, and also to create some kind of forums which might uh, help uh, to, to interpret the, the, the needs to, to, to work as as uh, watchdogs or to work as guardians uh, uh, in some way or another. Uh, uh, and um, uh, again, I, I'm sorry to mention again the Hungarian Constitutional Court, but, but uh, 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 of course, as you might know, uh, Hungary is not always uh, taken nowadays as uh, 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 the best example. And uh, just recently, as you know, to, I think it was today or uh, that uh, the European Parliament was uh, uh, could express uh, uh, the problems are related to our coming presidency of the EU. You, you might uh, could hear, but the Hungarian Constitutional Court is, is a forerunner in that respect. So the state should define the legal obligations and, and how to, you, to provide uh, legislative and institutional guarantees. This is a wonderful message. Uh, because uh, uh, because that is the most easiest and probably uh, uh, e acceptable uh, option uh, possibility how to uh, develop some kind of uh, framework for protecting the interests of future generations. Uh, I mentioned the World Future Council. Uh, probably you know uh, this uh, about this institution that uh, they say what kind of features of such kind of uh, such an institution should uh, have long-termism, integration, uh, sustainability goals, uh, uh, have, having uh, uh, governments and private sectors accountable, uh, 
Uh, and uh, they had five years ago a leaflet in that respect. What kind of uh, what kind of roles a, a, a kind a guardian, as they call, a guardian of future generations uh, might have? Uh, that it is an ombudsperson, probably. Uh, uh, in, it's an interface. Uh, also, it can be an advisory body. They are possible. Uh, they are not absolutely. Uh, this, uh, uh, they should be at the same uh, 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 organization, but most preferably it should be as an auditing body. And also uh, in the uh, all common agenda of the United Nations, the Secretary General again said that uh, uh, made some proposals how to come closer to this trusteeship council, futures laboratory, Declaration. It, it is. An, there are all ongoing projects today. Declaration on future generations. Most preferably, it will happen at the UN probably this year. Uh, and uh, uh, an option of United Nations special special envoy uh, to ensure the political and budgetary decisions uh, are in line. Uh, by the way, in brackets, I have to mention that the, the European Ombudsman is, is now focusing. Uh, uh, more and more towards that kind of issues, so towards the protection of future generations' interests. Okay, go back to my favorite philosophers. Uh, as you can see, the problem is that if you do not want to inherit such world, which the, uh, the other generations could uh, provide to you, then probably, as you can see, it's too late to uh, uh, get out of it because we are. Uh, uh, you are born, it says, I'm sorry for that, but uh, I think that these are uh, not uh, only funny, but uh, very, very uh, deep messages uh, at the same time. Okay, let's go to, uh, to our example, uh, or not only our example, but I begin with our example and then I try to expand it you, uh, to, to, uh, to a, a bit. Uh, it's very interesting because uh, uh, just 15 years ago, uh, the uh, the uh, Ombudsman for Future Generations could begin its uh, activity as an individual Ombudsperson. At uh, that time, there were um, data protection and minority rights and the general Ombudsman and this future generations Ombudsman, uh, which could, uh, in that way, could stay as an ind independent Ombudsperson for only for four years. Uh, and since 2012, it is uh, uh, they reorganized the whole system, and there is a commissioner for fundamental rights with two deputies. One is for the protection of future generations, named as the Ombudsman for Future Generations. At the same time, I'm, uh, it's me for the second term, beginning this year. And uh, the other is the protection of national minorities. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, uh, there are also very interesting and very important messages of the, the new Hungarian fundamental law beside uh, many uh, uh, other things which a lot of people are not so happy with that. But the, uh, these, issues, these messages are very important. Uh, there is an article P uh, which clearly focuses on, on uh, future generations and speaks about the common heritage of the nation. Um, this is very close to the international uh, law common heritage concept. Then it speaks about the right to physical and mental health and environmental issues, sustainable development issues are meant as uh, 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 very special tools for uh, these, uh, to, to, to uh, protect these rights. And there is an uh, uh, individual right for the healthy environment. And this uh, if interest of future generations it covers environmental protection, nature conservation, cultural heritage at the same time. What we are doing, uh, that's uh, the, the function of the Ombudsman. Ombudsman uh, the, the main function and the main uh, the rights are in the hand of the commissioner, as I mentioned, I'm the deputy, but we are, we are having several issues with very interesting questions, uh, which help us to, to uh, look carefully at the uh, questions of, of the drafts and having conferences and meetings. I, I, I 
show you how. So there are in, uh, possibilities of um, um, investigating complaints. There, uh, we are, I, my act, a kind of watchdog and warn just now, uh, uh, there was a, uh, unfortunately, there was an act uh, uh, finally adopted for on drilling wells without any permission and any uh, uh, notice, uh, which I was struggling against in the last some years uh, with, uh, with some, uh, sometimes uh, in a bidding, sometimes now I, it's a, it's a losing, uh, Kind of losing position, but we do our best to to uh, work, and also we are working together. I'm working together with with the expert, uh, uh, water management expert in that specific respect. And then we have regulatory proposals. Um, uh, we might go to constitu uh, the, the commissioner might go to constitutional court for our uh, proposal. Uh, 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 four years ago, five years ago, sorry. Uh, it was, uh, no, uh, five years ago, it was the, the drilling well, the wells issue. Now it was three years ago, the forest legislation, uh, big case of in front of the constitutional court to protect the forest. We might have a, uh, the possibility to uh, ask for judicial review of, the, uh, of uh, uh, interfere in, in not, not, not we in, in, in start the case, but we might interfere in uh, the, this judicial review processes. And uh, the, in my mind, the most practical and the, the best option for us is to provide a kind of platform for negotiations. And people like to come to us, uh, NGOs, government stakeholders, professionals, academia, uh, because we, uh, we offer a kind of absolutely neutral uh, forum uh, for this kind of discussions. And we, uh, then afterwards we uh, I personally did, I issue some uh, um, guidances and guidance documents how to understand the different uh, uh, problems uh, for the interests of uh, future generations. We are working close, I'm working closer to the National Sustainable Development Council, the National Environmental Protection Council, parliamentary committees, and there is a general awareness raising to send messages Sometimes media appearances, but it is not the most uh, uh, practical at this time. And uh, uh, we are listed as one of the sustainability institutions of Hungary. What are the uh, tools? We have a joint report. Then there is a, a possibility to explore systemic programs, to formulate legislative proposals, to issue uh, so-called general opinions and also so-called public statements in different things in connection with this. Now, I want to, uh, I know I just import this from uh, uh, another uh, uh, presentation. As you can see in the uh, uh, bottom right, there is this uh, network of institutions for future generations. As you can see, it was established nine years ago, uh, practically uh, uh, initiated by the, that time uh, uh, Ombudsman for Future Generations of Hungary, and since that time it is working. And this is uh, uh, the, uh, the project of, for our renewal of this kind of inst institution. So just I wanted to say that it, we are not alone. So their kind of institutions exist uh, or are, want and are going to be exist somewhere uh, also, some other places also. And this is what I wanted to mention. And uh, as you can see that it was, uh, 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 this is this network, you can find it uh, on the internet if you are interested, is, is uh, this year uh, uh, wanted, uh, decided how to enlarge and expand its uh, uh, vision to other, uh, uh, not only institutions, but leaders for future generations, the name, uh, is, is also is representing how it is expanding. And uh, as, a, as a final uh, point, uh, also from that, I'm sorry for uh, that's so small, but otherwise it, it could not go uh, into one uh, page. As you, I wanted to show you that these are the current members of this network of institutions of future generations. Uh, for some years, it was the future generations commissioner from Wells, was the uh, chair. Uh, this is a, a government, uh, a government body. Uh, then we are uh, in Hungary, uh, the Ombudsman for Future Generations. Uh, 
elected by the parliament, so we are responsible for the parliament. Uh, the, uh, in Israel, it is only history because it was a very strong uh, commissioner for four years, but it was so strong that uh, after the first uh, round of the government, they changed the law, um, unfortunately. Uh, the current chair is the Gibraltar commissioner for sustainable development of future generations. Then in Netherlands, there is a kind of informal ombudsperson for future generations who are work, who is working for uh, doing something similar in the Netherlands. Um, there is a, a commissioner for environment and sustainable development, government commissioner in Canada. In New Zealand, there is a parliamentary commissioner for the environment. And at last but not least, I might mention as a very interesting example because they they uh, uh, were using our experiences uh, very much, is the UK Office for Environmental Protection. And the history is very interesting because uh, uh, with the Brexit, uh, the uh, environmental uh, re, uh, lawyers uh, uh, were afraid of, uh, uh, and environmentalists were afraid of losing some control over the activities of the government because uh, there was the commission as a kind of watchdog and uh, it, 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 uh, how, how, what happens if it, will, it is missing in the future and therefore they could establish this government office which has very interesting uh, combination of powers as you can see very similar to us scrutinizing environmental improvement plans, scrutinizing environmental law, advising government, enforcing against the failures to comply with environmental law and this means that there is an interest and there is a growing tendency of uh, uh, establishing such kind of institutions uh, which are not necessarily uh, uh, politically powerful but which has a very uh, uh, good chance to to formulate uh, somehow the uh, decision makers behavior and that was uh, my uh, presentation and uh, thank you for your uh, interest